welcome to the Black Spruce Knitting Podcast. My name is Allie. I live in Vermont in the United States on Abenaki land. Um, and I live here with my partner Chris and our dog Darwin, who is joining me today. Um, I'm so happy that you are here today. I am going to share um, one finished object, two works in progress, and then some information about my life. I don't always talk about my life, but um, I asked in my last video if people would be interested and a bunch of folks said yes. So I thought I would talk a little bit, especially because there has been some sad stuff recently, which might give some context for why I haven't been knitting as much and why I haven't been posting as much. Um, so I will definitely put that at the end so that if you're not interested or you don't want to watch that, you know, I will invite you to, um, <laughs> end your journey with me there. Or if you are interested, um, I would be happy to share that part of what's going on with you. I don't really have any acquisitions today, except for a few things that I purchased for a project that I'm working on and I don't have any spinning projects. I have been spinning, but I haven't been super happy with what I am making. So I will um, save some spinning for another time. So I will start with what I am wearing, which is my new finished, finished object, which is the Versal Sweater by Albina McLaughlin. And I knit this in Mutadin yarns in the colorway Dvala. I have never knit with Mutadin before. Um, you probably have heard of it, but it is an unspun pencil roving from Sweden. And I bought this colorway about a year ago, a year and a few months ago. And I held two strands together. I wound them into balls so that I wasn't knitting straight from the plates. And this was a very enjoyable knit. So, this colorway is this sort of gorgeous green gray. Um, it has flecks of rust in it. Um, and, you know, again, it is wonderful to work with Newtodin. I completely understand why people are so into this yarn. I thought about buying some more in the last update, but I didn't for two reasons. One is that I don't need more yarn right now. I have a couple sweater quantities and I'm trying to only buy yarn that I can use with yarn that I already have for projects. And two, I am trying to source as much yarn possible locally, which isn't possible for everything. For example, I don't know of any silk mohairs that are milled close to where I live, um, but I don't need this yarn and it's from Sweden. So I'm really interested if you know of any unspun yarns that are milled in North America, specifically like the eastern part of North America, please let me know because I would love to try them. So I didn't buy any yarn from the last update, but I would love to knit with Newtodin again. Um, it's just definitely really special. I had a little bit of trouble with tension at the beginning. I am an English style flicker, so it took a little bit of time to get used to the tension. Um, and I will say there are some places where I feel like the yarn got a little thin, but it seems to be so strong. I didn't even split splice it if it separated. I just kind of like held it together and then gave it a little bit of twist and it seems fine. And um, yeah, it was really fun to work with and it was definitely like a very comforting project. I have not yet blocked this and I haven't woven in the ends. Um, there are still ends tucked in. Um, I'm waiting to weave in the ends for the sleeves until I've blocked it just because I want to make sure that the sleeves are a length that I enjoy once it's blocked. I actually undid the cast off for the body and made it a little bit longer um, because I tried it on and I was like, oh, it's not looking the way that I want it to. I want it to be a little longer. Um, but. I will say this is a really straightforward pattern and I think it's a wonderful pattern. It's a really good basic, especially because it is a slightly different construction and it isn't a raglan. I'm at the point where I own a couple raglan patterns. I also feel like I can mostly figure out a raglan on my own um, and I'm less interested in buying a raglan pattern unless it's offering me like color work or something interesting that I can't figure out on my own. This pattern has a saddle shoulder 
that is new for me. I haven't knit this type of construction before. And again, it's really simple, but um, it is um, just well constructed. This is my first time knitting one of Albina's patterns and I would certainly knit more. There are a lot of short rows, which I think is wonderful for the neck. There are three different options for neckline. There is turtleneck, mock neck, and then crew neck. I chose the mock neck and I do think it is maybe a little bit high. I am interested to see when it blocks, if it blocks out to be a little bit lower, um, but I don't mind. It's very warm and cozy. Um, and I just think that it's like a solid, well-written pattern with very clear instructions and a good fit. There are options for different sleeves. There's options for different fit for the body. I did straight sleeves. I didn't do any decreasing and I did straight body. Um, and I'm really happy with it. Um, I did switch on the sleeves to eight inch circulars and my gauge definitely changed. <laughs> There's like a little bit of a bump. I'll see if it blocks out. I'm not super concerned. Um, I think that the fit is still pretty good. I think I knit this on size US 7. I'm not sure. I'd have to go check my notes. Um, and then I think size US 3 for the ribbing. Um, I followed the instructions for um, length through the yoke and I do think the yoke is maybe a little bit deep for me. So if I were to knit this again, I would maybe start, I would maybe split a little bit sooner. Um, I love that you use a provisional cast on for the underarm stitches so that it's really seamless. Um, just like lots of nice little tiny details to sort of make this a very, I think, pretty knit. Um, I haven't worn it since it's not blocked, except I did wear it. We had a weekend here in New England where I think we had the polar vortex, like an Arctic blast, and it was really cold. Like the wind chill was like negative 40 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, because that is where Celsius and Fahrenheit meet, is at negative 40. Maybe you already knew that, but it was like negative 40 degrees and I had to take Darwin outside. Um, not for very long, because it was too cold, but I wore this under my jacket and it was so warm. And I was like wearing a ton of wool and bundled up and honestly, I just had like a little, a little sliver and I was totally fine outside just for a few minutes. Um, but I haven't worn it more than that and so I'll be interested to see how it wears. I want to see how this fabric holds up and see if it pills. Um, I know that Inga from Knitting Traditions has been talking about preferring to hold mohair with Nutidint to help it not pill since the mohair wraps around it. So I'll be really interested. It's a little bit scratchy but also quite um, wearable. I'm wearing a t-shirt under this right now and I don't mind it on my neck at all. And, you know, I just think it's a solid knit. Um, I don't know if I have too many more technical things to say about this. Um, I did have to record this twice because I hadn't pressed the on button. So I'm not sure if I have already said this, but this weighs about 400 grams. Um, and so I have two plates of muted in left over, which I will save for another project, or if someone needs the colorway Devala, I could send it to them um, if they run out, since muted in does very limited color batches. Like once they've sold a color batch, they don't sell it again, which is why it's nice to buy extra and then you can share with someone. Um, is there anything else that is exciting to say about this sweater? I didn't make any modifications. Yeah, I love the short row shaping. I definitely have some rowing out because I am working on making sure that my pearl stitches are tighter. Um, but I will likely knit this again. I might try at some point knitting it in Pluto Lopi. Um, and I'm also interested to try knitting this in not an unspun yarn. So maybe like a woolen spun yarn to see how it sort of fares with a different yarn type. Um, Darwin, is there anything else that I forgot about this sweater? Are you looking outside? No, okay. So this is my finished object. Um, it was definitely a slower knit, but it was a comforting knit and I really enjoyed it. My first new cast on is I have cast on for the Eastwind jacket from Emily Foden's book, Knits About Winter. 
I have finished another piece from that book for my mid along about winter, which I am running on Ravelry, and I will link below. It lasts until the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere or the autumn equinox in the southern. Um, I will say, I think that what I'm going to do is if you are knitting a sweater or the jacket, I will still consider an unfinished object for the giveaway just because we only have a couple weeks left and I would love for people to start something even if they don't think they're going to finish it. If it's a smaller object like an accessory, um, I will be drawing from finished objects. And I am hoping that in my next video I'll have the prizes ready. I am going to go to Must Love Yarn, which is a local shop that sells tons of Vermont yarns and I'm gonna find some really cool stuff. Um, so I have started my Eastwind jacket. I'm gonna grab it. And this is what I have so far. So this is just the first piece and I have the pocket opening right here. And I am knitting this out of the practice yarn from Junction Fiber Mill, which I visited about a year ago. They had the yarn that they had made from, um, I think it was Amanda, so Junction Fiber Mill is Peggy and Amanda. I think it was Amanda's flock, um, her sheep, sheep's wool, um, while they were sort of figuring out how to use all of their machines. They made practice yarn and they sold it for a very good price. It was about um, I think like $10 a ball and so I bought nine balls and I am using it with this yarn which is Peter Scholm Farms which is like um, a local to me farm that I bought their wool at Must Love Yarn and then I am also holding it with a non-local silk mohair which is Biche et Bouche Le Petit Mohair I think in the colorway dark brown. I will grab these yarns. Hold on one second. <laughs> so here are the two yarns. This is definitely a little bit lighter and more chocolatey, but I think being held together, they are combining really nicely. Um, the two main yarns at least. Um, and I am knitting this. I went down a couple needle sizes because the thing about this practice yarn is that I don't know if it's really a DK weight. It's a little thick and thin. There have been like one or two areas that are a little slubby. Um, that said, it's been extremely high quality and enjoyable to knit with for really the entire experience. Um, but I think it's a little bit thicker than the DK weight that was called for in the pattern. And so I went down a few needle sizes. I'm still hitting above gauge. Um, but I am knitting the second size. Oh, I forgot to say, I, knit, I think the third size of this, but um, I'm knitting the second size and I'm aiming for about like 15 inches of positive ease. We will see, it might be a little more, a little less, um, but I've gone down a few needle sizes, which at first I was really worried about. And I was worried that it would affect the drape. And when I sort of started knitting with the fabric, even having made a gauge swatch, I just sort of felt um, worried that the fabric wasn't draping as nicely and that it was stiff. But then I actually blocked part of the project. Um, the end was also really curling because of the stockinette and I wanted to make sure I could block it out before knitting the whole thing. And let me show you. I don't know if you can tell the difference between this fabric, oops, this fabric versus like this fabric, but it softened out, it filled up, it's just turned into like so drapey and I'm pretty excited by the blocked fabric. So that has given me kind of the motivation to keep going on this project which is great because I'm really excited about this. And I think that knitting it on the tighter gauge, like with this sort of thick yarn, my hope is that it will make this last longer. Um, I think that oftentimes we talk about a piece being an heirloom piece, but I don't actually know how many of my knits are gonna wear for many years because I've only had them for a few years. And my understanding is that when something is knit um, on a tighter gauge, that that helps it last longer, even if it might not be as aesthetically pleasing and so my hope is that this tight gauge will 
um, make a jacket that is dense enough to really keep me warm um, here where I live, like especially for the transitional seasons, but also that will last a long time, especially because this is very special yarn. Um, I think it's very cool to be knitting a whole jacket with like a local yarn. Um, that's why if you can, and I know that not everyone has access, it's always worth visiting mills because sometimes you can get really good deals. Um, a couple other things, I really am enjoying the stitch pattern on this and because it is knit back and forth, I am working hard on my tension for my purls. I am trying to tighten it up and the rowing out is not as bad as it has been for me in the past. Um, I considered switching I can also knit continental and I considered switching and I actually learned some different types of purling I think it's the Norwegian purl which is very nice but I just prefer knitting English style it is what comes naturally to me um, and you know I think I'm like really improving my tension on purls finally so you know I don't I don't mind purling um, this pattern has been easy to memorize and I can go for a while without having to look at the pattern. Um, and yeah, I'm enjoying knitting this and I can't believe I'm almost done with the first piece. It is going more quickly than I thought it would, but I would still consider it slower knitting. I don't even know if I'm gonna finish this by the time the knit along is over, which is okay because I'm not <laughs> entering for prizes, of course. Um, but I'm hoping to finish it by sometime this spring so I can wear it a little bit before next winter. Um, anything else? I haven't modified it except that I added a little bit of extra length after the pocket so that the pocket sits a little bit lower. I might change how the pocket is knit. Um, I'm gonna wait until I finish, but I might do some experimenting because I'm thinking of making a pocket that might be a little bit more sturdy than what I think is written in the pattern. Um, I will do a couple more modifications. I'm going to make the neckline smaller because I've read that it's too big. I might knit a little bit of a collar, which Emily Foden actually did when she knit this. She changed the, her own pattern a little bit. Um, and, you know, I'm gonna, I might adjust a few things. The only other thing is I am a little bit worried about running out of yarn. Um, so far, so good. If I run out, I have some plans to use other yarns, um, like specifically this this um, lighter contrast color in ways that I think will still look nice. Um, I could also email Amanda and figure out what breed of sheep this is since I can't remember and maybe try to find yarn from the same, same breed, but it definitely will be different yarn. So my hope is that I am able to um, have enough yarn to finish this project. So this is my long running work in progress and I was knitting this monogamously for a while, but then I decided I wanted to knit another shawl. So in my last episode, I spoke about the Key Runa shawl, which I had knit and I loved. And my parents were over for lunch recently and my mom was like, oh, I love this. This is so beautiful. And I was like, you should just take it. And she was like, well, I don't want to take it from you. And I was like, well, borrow it for a while and we'll see how it lives with you. Um, I have really been enjoying giving away some knits recently, um, even if they're things that I love just because I want the people in my life to have some of my hand knitted clothing. Um, oops. <laughs> Slipped some stitches off the needle. Um, you know, not everything, like especially a sweater that is like knitted directly to my body, I might not want to give away, but certain things I feel good about. And I might re-knit the Key Runa shawl, but I had two skeins from when I visited Junction Fiber Mill of their colored yarn. So I had these two skeins of Making Tracks, which is their marled yarn. Um, it's DK weight, and I bought them when I visited last year, and I thought, what if I bought more of their Making Tracks to Make a Night Shift um, by Andrea Mowry? A lot of people have been knitting the Night Shift recently and it's a really cool pattern and I wanted a big colorful shawl. Um, I know that Casey from Young Folk Knits and I think um, 
Nikki from Knitting with Cat Hair um, it, are, are both like knitting or have knit the shawl and I wanted one. I wanted something big and colorful. Um, I definitely knit a lot in neutrals, but I also love color. And so I went to their website to look because I also had a gift card from a few years ago for Junction Fiber Mill. And I picked up these three colors. So these three were my new colors. So these colors, I'm pretty sure this one's the deep end, the blue, I always forget. This one is Leaves in the Brook, Seacoast, Berry Jam, and Constellations. And I thought that these five together would make a nice, not super saturated, but pretty colorful shawl. Um, I will tell you a little bit more about this marled yarn. Um, it is now available at the Woolly Thistle, which is really cool. You know, I think Spin Cycle really popularized this type of marled yarn that is really very similar to hand, it, it, it's similar to hand spun, even if you're getting it mill spun. These skeins are, I think, $32 or $34 for 220 yards, um, which for a small mill, I think is like a really, really good price. This yarn is non-superwash, and it definitely has a little bit of a different feel than Spin Cycle. I actually was considering adding a Spin Cycle to this yarn, and so I will pull it out and show you, along with some of my hand spun. I was thinking about adding these two skeins. So this is hand spun. This is one of my old hand spuns. I actually think I was supposed to send this to someone. Um, but I thought about adding it because it is kind of fun. And then I have this skein of Cataclysm and Dream State. And this is a second skein from the Spin Cycle Seconds sale. So it was discounted that I got a couple years ago that I've been holding on to. And it's a little slubby, which is why it was discounted. But it's still a really high quality yarn. And so... <laughs> I thought about maybe adding these two and I think I might not because I think I have enough yardage with the five colors. Um, this blue is leftover from a sweater that I knit for my partner Chris, um, the Rock Island line. So I don't have the full 220 yards of this, but I have, I think enough with this to knit a full sweater. Um, but I feel like it's kind of a nice, um, example of comparing the dream state to the junction fiber mill. So a couple differences. One is that the dream state is a three ply versus the junction fiber mill is a two ply. The dream state is definitely thinner. I think it's a super wash, but correct me if I'm wrong. And then um, I actually did start adding this to my night shift and it just was thinner in a way that I felt like wasn't really working, which is part of why I'm leaving it out. I might do like a yoke sweater, maybe like a humulus in like dark gray or black with this either for myself or for Chris. Um, so I'm going to save this for another project um, or who knows. Um, it is... A beautiful yarn and I'm comparing a second to a non-second so you know I think that this isn't like necessarily representative of every skein of spin cycle but it definitely has a little bit of a different feel like this feels like woolier to me when I knit with it um, they're both beautiful yarns I think spin cycle has incredible colors um, but they're different so if you're looking for something that feels a little woolier, you might look into trying making tracks. I think they have some really nice colors. Their colors on the whole also tend to be a little bit more muted. Um, and so, you know, this is pretty bright, but I think on the whole, a little less saturated, a little co closer to a neutral. Um, so if you're interested, I mean, I love Junction Fiber Mill. I think they're fabulous. I've also met Amanda and Peggy and hope to, maybe this year I'll try to go back and film my follow-up video, which I meant to do last summer and then life got away from me. But um, I just, I mean, they're like two women who are owning a mill together. They're incredible. So I 
<laughs> always want to plug them but also like spin cycle is i think two women only owning a mill together also incredible there's so many cool people but you know um junction fiber mill is maybe lesser known i would say um so those are the colors and here is the beginning of my night shift <laughs> and i have to say i think it's very cool and also a little wacky i'm not 100 percent sure about all the colors it's pretty bright so i started with the leaves in the brook and then i have in the deep sea coast and then i switched to constellation and now i'm adding berry jam but i'm gonna make constellation the background color and you know i I'm kind of just going with it. I think I'm in the middle of a row right now, <laughs> excuse me. But I'm just kind of going with it. This is a, such a cool pattern. You're probably familiar, it's quite popular. It has like more than 8,000 projects on Ravelry, but you're slipping stitches. So it's mosaic knitting. You're not really doing color work. Um, it's very easy to memorize. And so it kind of opens the way for a lot of color play. And I'm not really going with what she suggests, especially because I only have five instead of six colors, but I'm just sort of going for like what I feel like looks interesting. And whenever I play with color, I can't tell if it's ugly. <laughs> you know, I wasn't sure if that striped scrappy sweater I made was ugly and now it's like my most worn knitted object. So I'm hoping that I'll feel the same way about this. I can't quite tell. You know, with this sort of like orangey, greeny brown that the leaves in the brook gets to, the purple of constellations is reading a little mucky and a little gray, but I actually don't dislike that. Um, I'm wondering if maybe as a whole, when all of these colors are together, they will read more neutral and sort of like less um, bright, which could be really cool. But also I love color and I want more color in my wardrobe. I don't know. I'm interested to see where this goes. Um, I can spend a lot of time thinking about my knits and this is one of those where I was like, I'm thinking and thinking and I'm like putting different colors together and texting my friends um, and like asking my partner who's like, I think anything you do will look great because they're very supportive. Um, but this is where I'm at. And it's just, I only started like two nights ago and it's just such a fun color play, which is really what I feel like I'm needing right now. You know, I'm trying not to knit on too many different pro projects. I have a lot of unfinished objects that I need to return to or frog. Um, but this one, because it's so colorful, it's bringing me a lot of joy and I am positive that whatever it looks like, honestly, I'm going to wear it because I wear <laughs> everything. <laughs> Um, and so I'm just enjoying the process. Um, that also reminds me, speaking of color, I wanted to show you a swatch for a project I didn't cast on for, but one last look, the night shift. But here is a little swatch for another scrappy sweater. I was like grabbing all these different greens and some of my hand dyed hand spun and swatching and playing and I wasn't that into it so I didn't ultimately cast this on um but I think I think it's interesting it's not too dissimilar from this but I think it's interesting to swatch just to like play and be like do I want to make this do I not want to make this um like I feel like I could spend so long just like looking at all of my like scraps and all of my like little pieces of yarn and being like, is there a way that I can combine this that feels exciting and interesting, which is part of why I do enjoy having a stash. Um, you know, I have like a couple sweater quantities right now and a lot of scraps and odd skeins. And I like it because I like being able to sort of play in this way, but then also <laughs> sometimes it's really frustrating and I'm like, oh, this is not the effect I want. Um, so I just wanted to show you and I will show you more swatches of projects that I probably won't knit because I think it's interesting um, to look at. So that is all of my knitting that I have to show you. 
I will talk a little bit about my life and my life with my husband. Um, I am just going to let you know that I'm going to be talking a little bit about suicide. Um, so if for any reason that is something that you don't want to or can't listen to, like thank you so much for joining me up until this point. Um, I hope that you do whatever you need to to take care of yourself. So Chris and I found out the day after Christmas that one of our friends killed himself. Um, and we were in Montreal, we were on our way to Quebec City and it was pretty shocking. I don't, it, it, it wasn't surprising, but it was pretty shocking. And um, we were in Quebec City and we hadn't like brought any screens with us cause we were like, we're just gonna be doing things. And we had a really like weird week where we were enjoying our time and also just like in shock and grieving and trying to figure out what this meant and we kind of couldn't believe it. Um, and then we went to the memorial service in January and January was like a weird month. And I was thinking about it during my last video, but I wasn't sure if it felt appropriate to say anything um, because it's sad and this is a knitting video, um, but it's also part of my life. It's definitely impacted my knitting. I think it is part of the reason that I have bought more yarn, honestly, but I've, I've kind of stopped that now um, that I bought the yarn in Quebec City and the yarn at Green Mountain um, Spinnery. But it's just been weird. Um, you know, I've had loss before and I've lost friends to suicide, but not a friend this close. And, you know, I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about suicide as a mental health therapist and as a person. Um, but I think what it really comes down to is that it just fucking sucks that my friend is dead and I miss them and I'll never get to talk to them again. Um, so that's kind of but like what has been up with me. Um, Chris and I are kind of coming out of it a little bit. Um, just a heads up that if you leave a comment about it, I might just heart it, but not respond. Um, just, you know. Um, but if you have lost someone to suicide or if you have been suicidal or if suicide has ever impacted your life, just know that I'm there with you. It's a really hard and complicated thing. And I hope that you find the support that you want or need. And I hope that you find the connection that you want or need. Um, yeah, I will leave actually a, like, some suicide hotlines in the box, um, but that has been a lot of our life. Um, it's just been kind of a hard winter and it hasn't, the weather has been weird. It's been really warm and then it's been freezing and it's been icy and I keep re-injuring my back. I think my back is finally better, so hopefully we'll be able to go on our honeymoon in May since we had to postpone it. Um, and I might do a little bit more traveling. I'm trying, I, you know, I work a lot. I see a lot of clients and I'm trying to prioritize some rest. Um, we are planning our garden. We got our seeds in. <laughs> I thought about doing like a seed haul and then I was like, I don't know if anyone is excited to see like a bunch of different vegetable seeds um maybe i'll show them as we're planting them but we're going to expand our garden this year and we're going to get some more fruit trees and bushes to put in and so that's really exciting that's like i love our garden um and what else am i looking forward to um i'm gonna try brazilian jiu-jitsu as a martial arts soon. Chris is really into martial arts, so I'm gonna try BJJ. Um, I haven't been reading that much. I've been kind of out of it. I'm like, what have I been doing? And I think the answer is that I've just been playing video games, which is usually what I do when I'm feeling kind of cruddy. Um, not knitting as much, not even like watching TV. So, you know, that is what grief is. I don't think there's any wrong or right. I'm just kind of like letting it be and getting through things day to day and trying to plan some stuff to look forward to for the spring and the summer. Um, yeah, is there anything else to say? No, I don't think so. So yeah, we're just hanging in there, taking care of ourselves, taking care of each other, 
sending a lot of love out to you. Um, this has nothing to do with anything, but I want to tell you, Chris saw a fisher cat in the woods last night. We parked at the bottom of the driveway and they like walked down to walk me up. Our driveway gets very icy. <laughs> um, and Chris was walking down and saw a fisher cat, which are these like huge, like carnivorous forest otters effectively. And they make this horrible sound that sounds like a baby crying. And they're like kind of scary, but also incredibly cool. And we have at least one living in the woods and I am sort of jealous that Chris saw it because I think that sounds so cool. So if you don't know what a fisher cat is, you should go Google one. Um, one of many interesting animals that we have here. Um, but yeah, I'm sending a lot of love out to you. Um, I got my haircut today. That's cool. Um, I'm wishing you health and happiness and um, whatever you need. So I'll try to do one more episode before the knit along is done and I'll share some prizes and then I'll make an episode afterwards. And yeah, I invite you to join. I'll post a link below. Happy knitting. Happy February. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> I'm filming this on Valentine's Day if you celebrate and I will see you soon.